Hello and welcome to Fairtube and the YouTubers Union. Our video from one week ago, Attention YouTube, was really a big success. Over 200,000 views already and the like-dislike ratio is fantastic. Enormous. <laughs> In the meantime, we have sent a letter with our demands and the request to enter into negotiations to Google YouTube um, in Germany, in Ireland and also in California. These letters should have arrived by now or if not they will arrive really soon. We got a ton of press in Germany, in the US, everywhere, even in China. Imagine that. <laughs> Many reporters pressed really hard for YouTube to come up with a statement and uh, in the end they actually did one but it is as useless and um, slippery just like the typical letters that they send you when they remove or demonetize a video of yours. Our website fairtube.info saw many many thousands of visitors and actually it looks very simple but there is a ton of useful information to find. For example the counter with a deadline for YouTube but also uh, you see all these links to all the press that we've gotten and also you will see our daily arguments from Monday through Friday we will post another argument why YouTube is unfair on that website. And we also had more than 6,000 comments on the two videos that we released, the German and the English one. Uh, most of these comments were absolutely positive and supportive, but some people also raised some issues, some concerns and also had some questions. And today in this video we would like to address these issues and concerns. And in order to do that we've decided that some of these questions will be answered by the colleagues from the IG Metal uh, in Frankfurt and some of these things I will address by myself. But first let's pass over to Frankfurt to the 16th floor of the IG Metal building in Frankfurt at the Main River. My name is Robert Fuß. I work at IG Metall headquarters in Frankfurt. I'm Six Hildman. I also work at IG Metall headquarters in Frankfurt. I'm an American and I moved here to Germany uh, four years ago and I worked with Robert in the crowdsourcing project. Since we started our FairTube initiative with Jörg Sprava and the YouTubers Union last week, we got a lot of comments, a lot of questions, a lot of feedback. We're going to try to answer some of them today. First question is, your demands sound great for Germany, but do they fit for the rest of the world? Yeah, so the answer is yes. We want to give all YouTubers more transparency and more rights, no matter where they live. Everyone can benefit from clear rules, not just people in Germany or Europe. What we're asking for, we think, is really reasonable. We also think that YouTube is run by reasonable people, and we think they'll understand that what we're asking for is reasonable. And we think that they'll do what we're asking and give everyone these rights, not just Germans and Europeans. Ian McCollum of the Forgotten Weapons channel made a video about the YouTubers Union, and one of the comments was really great. Cormoran said, imagine if the government went by YouTube's idea of, we won't tell you our laws, so you won't find a loophole around them. I mean, yeah, imagine. It's been tried, hasn't it? It didn't go great. Another question is, you say maybe as a YouTube creator I am an employee of YouTube, but I do not want to be an employee of YouTube. What do you say? Yeah, me neither. And you don't have to be. It is not our goal at all to turn all YouTubers into employees of YouTube. Our goal is to get YouTube to treat creators like real partners, like real independent contractors. But right now, YouTube wants to have it both ways. And they're getting it both ways. They want to call YouTubers contractors, self-employed people, partners, but they exercise as much control over them as they would over a real employee with all of the protections that employees should get. The demonetization system allows YouTube to exert control over a creator's work. The control is indirect, but it's very, very real. True independent contractors shouldn't be subjected to that kind of control and they should be able to contest if YouTube decides, after they've done work, that YouTube isn't going to pay a creator for work that they've already done. Another question is, YouTube's a private company. They set their own rules. And if you don't like their rules, why don't you build your own platform and go there? So there's three points about this question. First, just because they're a private company and they own the platform, which is obviously true, does not mean they can do whatever they want on. For example, even in the US, they cannot tell you that they are not giving data about you to some other company and then turn around and give that data about you to some other company. 
Facebook did that and recently got slapped with a $5 billion fine in the United States. So no, they cannot do whatever they want. There are rules also for platform companies. There are also rules that apply to all private businesses. For example, if I hire an employee, I can't pay them less than minimum wage. I can't hire kids. These are rules that apply to every business. There are even rules about what companies can write into contracts. Sometimes a company writes something into a contract with an employee or a customer or a freelancer, and the contract is later found to be unenforceable. So this whole thing of, it's a private company, they can do whatever they want. It's just not true, it's false. There are rules for private companies, including platform companies, including YouTube. The question is, what are the rules? That's not clear yet. YouTube has gotten away with a lot so far, but so did Facebook for a while. Second, building a new platform. Yes, of course we can do that, but think how much money Google has invested in server capacity, including for YouTube. How much money is it going to take to compete with that? We can talk more about this in the future, and we should, but it's a long-term project. Starting to build a new platform today will not solve YouTubers' problems tomorrow. It's important to talk about competition, and it's important to build competing platforms, but let's be realistic about how long it'll take to build a serious alternative. Finally, until there is a serious alternative, YouTube has very close to a monopoly in terms of video platforms with a built-in business model. Okay, thanks guys. And I also totally agree, it would cost a boatload of money and many, many years of development to come up with an alternative platform. Now, of course, a lot of people will now say, then use one of the available platforms like BitChute or Vimeo or so on. Let me tell you, those aren't alternative platforms, not for professional YouTubers that need to make a living from their work. And I will explain to you why that is. Many, if not all, of these alternative platforms have no creator income system, like YouTube does. So the problem is that very big uh, creators now have a chance to make other money, for example, finding sponsors or living from the donation of their fans. But the small and medium-sized channels need the money from the advertisements and uh, if there is no such system, then this is not possible for them. Now, and for the bigger creators, these alternative platforms are all useless. And I will explain to you why. First of all, uh, a YouTube channel needs an influx, a constant flow of additional subscribers and viewers, because some people simply decide this is no longer interesting and, and do something else. So if you do not manage to attract new subscribers and new viewers to your channel, then your channel will die out and eventually disappear. And in order to find a lot of new viewers and subscribers, you need two things. You need a platform that has a lot of traffic, so a lot of visitors. And also you need a recommendation system, so that if people show up on the platform that have an interest for the stuff that you do in your videos, they find you. And if a platform does not have enough traffic or does not have a recommendation system, then that won't work. So a big channel that's only focusing on a platform that does not have a recommendation system and does not have a lot of traffic will die out very, 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 very quickly. And let me tell you, most of the alternative platforms out there do not have a recommendation system and, and no, no platform has anywhere near the traffic that YouTube has. Then there is the issue with the bandwidth. See, if a big YouTuber brings out a new video, then thousands of people want to watch it the moment it comes out. So it, this takes a huge amount of server capacity because that's a one-on-one, -on -one, that's not a broadcast. This means they have to send that data stream to every one of those viewers. And only really, really big companies like YouTube have the capacity to do that. So if a big uh, channel would now bring out a video on a smaller platform, it would collapse immediately and then all the viewers would only see like a waiting symbol trying to load the data and not getting any. So all in all, these alternative platforms may be really good for small creators or hobby people, but for the big professional creators, they're just not an alternative. So for the larger YouTubers, and it's myself included, YouTube has a monopoly. And we demand that YouTube steps up and takes the responsibility that arises from that monopoly. Just like Six said. So the next concern that people have expressed and that I'd like to address is, uh, will YouTube not simply shut down their service for the EU if you come with these demands? <laughs> and 
The answer is no, we don't think so. See, our demands are very mild. All we're doing is we're asking for more fairness. We're asking for more transparency. And we're asking for a better communication. See, the EU is the biggest market that YouTube has on the planet with millions and millions of fairly wealthy households. And you don't give a market up like that just because of these harmless demands. So the next issue, a lot of people are really pessimistic and we hear things like this will never work, this is going to fail. Well, we are not that pessimistic. For YouTube, a great deal of money is involved. And the EU is really not very cautious slapping those big fines up on YouTube. You know, just a few weeks ago, Google had to pay a fine of 1.5 billion euros. That's 1.7 billion dollars to the EU because it was seen that their advertising rules are unfair. Bam, 1.5 billion. And that's only a trifle in comparison with the fines that they could actually have to pay for breaching the GDPR. We're talking more than 5 billion here. And even serious experts actually believe that we are right and that Google is breaking the law here. So ultimately will also be fined. Of course, they can simply escape from this by changing, by being transparent, like the law demands. But we also think that all this great publicity that we are getting, all the magazine reviews, all the other YouTubers, even television, we believe that that actually will help as well. Because at some point, the shareholders will start to get nervous. Because ultimately, all these fines will have to be paid out of their pockets. So I think that latest when that happens, then Google will react. And last not least, don't forget that we have a sweet list of actions that we can call shitstorms that involves, of course, our members and also uh, the sympathetic audience. <laughs> and um, we, we can't talk about those now and they will probably not have as much momentum as the lawsuits will have. But they are definitely far more entertaining, I guarantee. <laughs> anyway, that's it for today. Thanks and bye bye.